Well, good evening, everyone. If you would be opening your Bibles to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Tonight we're going to begin in verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Mike, would you lead our prayer tonight, please? These next three verses in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7, 8, and 9, at least in my opinion, are three fairly difficult verses to explain. And as we're going to see tonight, I'm going to explain why I made that statement. Because reading them just from the outset, they really don't seem that difficult. But whenever we then try to make it fit in the context of what we've been seeing in the book of Revelation, we then start to see how these are difficult passages to understand. And so we're going to spend most of our time tonight looking at verse 7 and mainly an introduction to these three verses. We may get to all of it, but I don't foresee us being able to do that. But starting out, let's look at the wording of verse 7. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. One thing that we should keep in mind as we begin our study is that when we try to understand figurative language, we need to understand that the meaning is never the opposite of the figurative statement. And what I mean by example is this. In this passage it says that there was war in heaven. So logically, we cannot look at this and say that there was not any type of conflict whatsoever. We cannot look at this and say, well, where it says war, it really means peace. Figurative language does not work that way. And while the elements in these visions may be that which is figurative, we see that the activities are ones that are typically literal. 
For example, whenever we saw the plague of locusts, it was the activities that it described these locusts being involved in that led us to a proper understanding of what was actually being represented by the figure of the locusts. It was not literal locusts, but we had to look at the actions and the activities of the locusts to understand what was being represented. So in this statement, we see the figures here. First off, we see a setting. It says that it is taking place in heaven. We see the figures that are mentioned. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, or Satan, and his angels. We see that there is some type of conflict. Some type of battle is ensuing. And since a conflict is directly stated, since this is an activity and not merely a detail or a setting or a figure, we see that some type of activity took place. We cannot deny that there was some type of conflict, some type of battle that was going on. Now there are many scholars... And this is where things really start to get a little confusing whenever we look at these three verses. There are many Bible scholars who look at this passage and they try to claim that what we are seeing in these three verses are Satan and his angels after roaming the earth for a period of time are now coming back and trying to basically muscle their way back into heaven. That they have found some type of a way that they are able to come back into that heavenly realm and they are trying to fight their way back into heaven. But then, following their defeat by Michael and his angels, they were then cast out of heaven, but this time they were not cast to earth. This time they were cast into torment or bound in chains of darkness, as the text says, until the day of judgment. Now, let me tell you this at the outset. I do not personally believe that we have clear evidence to support this view. The Bible is clear, though, that there were angels who rebelled against God. There were angels who were cast from heaven. Peter tells us in 2 Peter 2 and verse 4, For if God spared not the angels when they sinned, but cast them down to hell and committed them to pits of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So I want you to notice two things about the context of this verse that I just shared with you. First, notice that it says that they were cast down to hell, or more literally, they were cast down to Hades. They were sent to the region of torment, which we know is a part of that Hadean realm, and there they are awaiting the day of judgment. But notice also that Peter does not say that they stopped off on earth for a while on their way to hell. Notice he says that they were cast from heaven into or down to hell. What we do see from this passage is that there were angels who sinned. Now, we are not going to get into a discussion of why they sinned, what they did wrong, how they were able to sin. A lot of those things we really don't have straight answers to anyway. But for the purpose of our study, we find that the Bible tells us in multiple places that there were angels who sinned. And they were cast out of heaven. Jude verse 6 gives us a little bit more information, a little more detail. He says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So the angels that sinned, Notice it says that they were cast out of heaven down to the waiting place of torment 
because they disobeyed God and they left their own habitation. Now there are some who claim, and I tend to believe this to be a more rational view. Now let me say from the outset, this is another view that we cannot look at and state with any certainty that this is the fact. But I think this is a more rational view than what we saw earlier. There are some who say that at some point in time, Satan and his angels rebelled against God. They left heaven and came to earth for a time. They tempted man to sin, and as a result, they were denied access back to heaven. Now, this is a possible explanation. Again, let me say possible. I don't want you to come away from this saying that Josh said this is how it is. This is a possible explanation for the evil spirits that were present on earth during the time of Christ. That these were these angels who had rebelled against God and had come to earth. Now, we know that it is a fact because the Bible tells us that there were evil spirits on the earth at that time. Now those evil spirits had to come from somewhere. And so it is very possible that these evil spirits were angels who in their rebellion had left heaven and had come to earth to tempt man. Now, this presents a little bit of difficulty. Because if this is indeed the case, if Satan and these evil spirits were roaming the earth at the time of Christ, then what many people look at and accept in regard to the time frame of the fall of Satan would not be true. Because most people, when they think about the fall of Satan, generally, when do they think that happened? Very early on either before God created the heavens and the earth or shortly thereafter. But if this view that we are considering is the case and that Satan and the evil spirits had not been cast out of heaven at this point but had just rebelled against God and came to earth to tempt man then we would have to say that they had not been cast out of heaven yet. That at this point, they would still have been considered angels of God, but those who had rebelled. They had left heaven on their own accord. So, as I said, we can look at this and we can see some plausibility there. But there's also grounds to look at this and say, well, that, that really doesn't make a lot of sense. It really doesn't, doesn't mesh very well with what we see. But we also need to understand that there are places in the Old Testament, particularly the ones that come to mind, are two places in the book of Job where it talks about God and Satan conversing with each other. And whenever you look at the Hebrew terminology that's used in those two places, the wording or the literal translation is they had a face-to-face -face conversation with each other. And so, once again, we look at this and we say, well, was Satan able to go back into heaven and have this conversation with God? Or was he roaming the earth and God came to earth and conversed with him there? What was the case? Well, whenever we look at the context of the book of Job, when it talks about him being in the presence of God and conversing with God, we see another group of people that are mentioned as being there as well. And they are described as the sons of God. Now, the question that arises these sons of God that are pictured being there in the presence of God and Satan when they are conversing about Job, 
Are these the fallen angels? Are these the ones that uh, either were rebellious angels that were wandering the earth that had not been cast from heaven yet? Or is this talking about something else? Well, if we go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, we see a more definite translation, a more definite definition of who the sons of God are. We see literally all this is referring to are those who are followers and worshipers of God. Romans 8, 14. And so, as I said, while there are some reasonable arguments we can look at, we see that by accepting those arguments, there are red flags that arise with every one of them. There are things that we can easily uh, dismiss from a more in-depth study of the Scriptures. And so, in the book of Job, it is my personal opinion, and we're going to see this a little bit more in depth later on this evening, but it is my personal opinion that Satan did not have access to heaven at that time. He and his angels did not have the ability at that time to go back into heaven and to converse with God. Well, Josh, where do you get that? Well, we see that already at that point, Satan had been bound. Already at that point, his power had been limited, had it not. God gave him the power and the authority to tempt Job. But his power was limited. And he was bound only to the divine directives that God had given to him. And so we can conclude that already at that point we find that Satan's power was bound. And that fact is going to become even more clear as we go further on in the book of Revelation. But we also need to consider another vision. This coming from Zechariah chapter 3. And in this vision we see Satan being in the presence of Joshua. And he is presented in the figure of the enemy of Joshua, or in this case, the enemy of the Israelite nations. Well, there are some commentators that look at this and they say, well, see here, this is an image that shows that Satan was still in heaven or still had access to heaven because of the context of that vision. But here's my argument there. If Satan had access to heaven, then Joshua had to have access to heaven as well. Because they were both present in that vision. And we understand from many passages of Scripture that when we pass from this life, folks, do we go straight to heaven? No. We don't go straight to heaven. In fact, we will not have access to heaven until after the day of judgment. And so looking at this, already by the time that this vision is being set forth, Satan has already lost access to heaven. This fall has already taken place. It says that he is in the company of the angel of Jehovah. And so once again, people look at this and they say, well, if he's in the presence of the angel of the Lord, then he has to be in heaven. No, he doesn't. Satan did not have access to the throne of heaven. But what we're coming back to and where we're going to start moving in this conversation, there are many people in the religious world around us today that believe that this war in heaven took place during the ministry of Christ. They believe that Satan fell during the ministry of Christ. And this is where I come back to this idea that many have uh, have promoted that Satan and his angels rebelled, came to earth, tempted man. Well then Satan or Jesus came on the scene with the authority to cast out those evil spirits. 
And so what many people argue, they say, well, when Jesus cast out those evil spirits, and ultimately when Jesus died on the cross, then Satan and his angels were effectively expelled from heaven. Up to that point, it had never got to the point where God had actually cast them out. But they had left on their own accord. They had rebelled against God. But let's consider some things. Now remember, I know I'm presenting things in a way tonight that you may be scratching your heads. You may be wondering where exactly does he stand? Where is he uh, going with this? But we're going to tie it all together. During Jesus' ministry, we read about him sending out 70 disciples to preach the gospel. They were to go out two by two into neighboring cities. They were to prepare the way for his coming. Well, do you remember when they came back what the report was that they gave? The report was that even the evil spirits were subject to them. Even the evil spirits answered to them. Well, Jesus then responded, and this is where some question marks sometimes arise in people's mind. Jesus responded in Luke 10 and verse 18. He said, I beheld Satan fallen as lightning from heaven. And so many people look at this and they say, well, Jesus is saying this is something that he had just witnessed, uh, just witnessed recently. This was something that transpired whenever he had given his disciples the authority to cast out evil spirits. And as those evil spirits were cast out and they tried to get back into heaven, the door was shut. They were cast down to earth. Well, do you see anything in the text whatsoever where Jesus says, you know what, this is something I saw just the other day. This is something that I saw happen while y'all were out on your mission. No. He doesn't say that at all. But those who support this view that war took place in heaven while Jesus was on this earth inevitably turn to this verse and they say, here is proof. But it's not. That's not what this is saying at all. In fact, we do not find any supporting scriptures whatsoever that tell us that war took place in heaven during the time of Christ. Nothing says this whatsoever. But also, whenever we look at the wording of what Jesus said, when he said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. It's difficult with the wording and the way that this is worded to know whether he is talking about heaven where God is or heaven meaning just a high, exalted place. Sometimes in the scriptures the term heaven is used to refer to what we would call the sky and the atmosphere and space. And so one way that we could look at this, and and this is where I believe it is more logical to view in this way. This is my opinion. What Jesus is saying is that he saw the power and the influence of Satan weakening. He saw the power that Satan had over mankind, him being held up in this high, exalted position, because frankly, until Jesus came and brought the gospel message, who had control of the world? The devil. Satan did. But now, Jesus had come... With all authority, he was casting out evil spirits. His disciples were casting out evil spirits. And so slowly, here we have Satan up on this pedestal, reigning over the world. But as those demons begin to be cast out, and people begin to recognize the power and the authority of Christ, Satan's influence starts in a downward spiral. 
It gets to the point where his influence is not as powerful as it once was. These evil spirits being cast out is not what caused Satan to be cast down from heaven. And that's the argument that people make. Because look, the disciples have come back saying, we've been able to cast out devils. And Jesus said, well, I saw Satan come down from heaven. Jesus isn't saying, because of what you accomplished, God cast Satan out. It's not what he's saying at all. He says, but because of the power and the authority that you've been using to change the hearts and the minds of mankind, Satan's power and influence is growing weaker. He is no longer in this high and exalted place. And I think this is a much more logical way to view this than to try to take one of these stances that Satan and his angels were they came to earth and they were here for a while tempting people and then they tried to go back to heaven. You know, that's pretty far-fetched. But I think whenever we look at this and we see the actual context of what is being discussed here, Ultimately, what we see is the fall of Satan in the hearts and the minds of man. If you take the view that, that uh, what you said earlier about Satan going back up into heaven, uh, when he first appeared, he was in the Garden of Eden. And uh, that would, you know, he would have had to gone back to heaven if, if uh, he was in the Garden of Eden. That's right. That's right. And so... Did he come to earth and tempt Adam and Eve and then go back to talk to God about Job and then come back? Did he rebel several, several times? And so I mean, it's not logical to view it that way. And as we've seen in so much of Revelation, many of these things are not intended to be taken literally in that sense, but they are meant to be seen figuratively that apply to other spiritual truths. And that's what we're seeing in this. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, I, I'm thinking, could this statement uh, in 7, could that have come even before he was cast out of heaven? The wars, you know, between Michael and the angels. And could, could that have happened before God even cast him out? Well, that, that's what we're about to talk about. So. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Now remember how, how we started the class tonight. Was there a conflict in heaven? I think so. Yes. Was there rebellion in heaven? Yes. yes. But did it happen in the lifetime of Christ? No. no. Did these angels rebel, come to earth, and then go back and wage war trying to get back in? It didn't happen while he was here on earth, but it was within his lifetime because he always was. Well, I meant during his physical life. I'm not trying to be smart, but... I, I know what you meant, Don. <laughs> no, no during, during his earthly time here. No. So with all that being said, there is not one bit of support to show that a literal war in heaven took place during the time of Christ. Not one bit of evidence tells us that. But there is evidence to prove that at some point there was a battle in heaven. At some point there was a conflict that was waged. And Satan and those angels who sinned, they were cast out of heaven. Now, exactly when that happened, we cannot say. There are many things that we can look at. But as we see in Revelation 12 and verse 9, Satan and his angels, they've been cast out of heaven. They can't get back, no matter how hard they may try to fight their way back in. They cannot get back. Reentry is forbidden, and they have been cast down to torment, and it says that they are bound there. They are there in torment, meaning their eternal destiny is sealed. They can't get back into heaven. So it's clear that when Satan and his angels left heaven, it was not a peaceful time. 
And when they left heaven, Satan and his angels, they attempted to, uh, as it says here, they attempted to overthrow the authority of God and it did not turn out in their favor. Because Michael and his angels, those on the side of righteousness, they fought against Satan and his angels and they were cast out. So, it's logical for us to conclude that if the forces of evil were going to lead a revolt or a rebellion against heaven while Jesus was on earth, what would have been the logical starting place? Would it not have been to try to take out Jesus first? Because didn't Satan have the knowledge that Jesus is the Son of God? Did Satan not have the knowledge of why Jesus was here? So would it not make more sense to try to stop Jesus first than to try to wage war in heaven? Well, we've already talked about in a previous lesson how... Uh, how Satan had tried to stop Jesus in a number of ways. We talked about it a little bit last week, especially when he was a newborn, when he used Herod to try to stop Jesus. And so looking at this, would it not, as I said, be more sensible? As we've already established last week, to go after Jesus first, than to try to wage war in heaven. And I believe that is exactly what we see taking place. Satan is trying to defeat Jesus. Now, what we're seeing presented here, this battle or this war, and I know we're almost out of time, so I want to get through these thoughts tonight. So the question is this. It's not, was there a war in heaven? There was. But rather, when was the war in heaven? When did this battle take place? Yes, there was rebellion in heaven that led to the defeat and the expulsion of Satan and his angels. That's beyond question. The Bible establishes that fact for us. We don't really know anything about this battle. We really don't know about this foolish confrontation other than the fact that Satan and his angels did not prevail against God. They were cast from heaven and they were cast into torment. So now here is what we've been, uh, what I've been talking about for almost 40 minutes to bring us to. Here's the most logical explanation, at least in my opinion. If you disagree, that's okay. We can talk about it. The most logical explanation, in my opinion, is that this and the following three verses is talking about an ongoing spiritual battle. It's not talking about a one-time event but it is talking about an ongoing spiritual war that has been taking place since the time of creation. God and the forces of evil have constantly been waging war against Satan and his or God and the forces of good have constantly been waging war against Satan and the forces of evil. But it finally reached its climax in the final triumph of Jesus over death. When Jesus rose from the dead, we see this battle finally came to its apex, finally came to the climax. And so that's where we're going to stop for tonight. And Lord willing, next Wednesday night, we will pick up in verse 8, and we'll try to cover more than one verse next week.